Verse number one. Normally I say that I'm not a traditionally so during occasions, festive occasions, sometimes I skip. I skip uh, the traditions that governs it. But today uh, I, I am going to speak about the Palm Sunday. Hallelujah. Because uh, we cannot skip it all the time. It is profound and it is good that sometimes we delve into it and receive the revelation that God has for us. Amen. Amen. Can I borrow an NIV please? For some reason my internet is gone. Thank you mommy. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you so much. It's back on. <laughs> All right. Sometimes these things play games with us. So, Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11 from verse number 1 to 11. The Bible says that as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a cold tide there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it. Hallelujah. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. Verse 4. They went and found a cold outside a street tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that cold? They answered as Jesus had told them to. And the people let them go. When they brought the cold, to Jesus and threw their cloak over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the heaven. Sorry, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Verse 11. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around and at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you so much for the gift of life and we thank you for the opportunity to be here. I thank you, Jehovah, for this congregation that you have blessed me with. The Lord, you have caused me to be a shepherd over their souls. Father, just as you have given them unto me, so do I pray, Jehovah, that this afternoon you will cause me in the name of Jesus and the under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Cause me, my God, to become a blessing to every soul that is gathered here in the name of Jesus. And Jehovah, let the words of my mouth, the declarations of my mouth, speak volumes in the lives of your people. Let the declarations of a ten situations in the name of Jesus Christ. And Jehovah, let restoration come unto your people. That we will leave here with a testimony of the fact that indeed you have blessed us because we came. Master, speak for your people are ready to receive. Even as I decrease, may you increase in me and speak your unadulterated word. Let prophecies be declared. Let oracles be declared. Let destinies be shaped. Let healing transpired in the bodies of your people in the name of Jesus. Above all, let us live here with a deposit in our spirit. Knowing that indeed you have spoken unto our situations. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let's begin. Let me just trace, retrace steps back a bit to talk about uh, the life of Jesus Christ. The life of Jesus Christ begins with the virgin birth. Hallelujah. And the virgin birth, we all know that it began with the annunciations of the fact that a miracle baby is about to be conceived. And that baby will be conceived in the womb of a virgin called Mary. Hallelujah. And when Mary had received that word of the angel Gabriel, the Bible says that Mary said, I am the Lord's maiden. May it be unto me according to your word. Hallelujah. And this afternoon my prayer is that it will be unto you according to the spoken word of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so Mary received the good news of Christ to be conceived, the Lord to be conceived and be given birth to at an appointed time. Now we are no, we are told of the fact that Jesus, Mary received this information in Nazareth. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. The scripture says, "O Bethlehem, thou little tribe in Judea, shall the Lord be born." Hallelujah! And the Bible also makes us aware that Jesus was born in a manger. Now that was how lowly his beginning was. Hallelujah! Now conceived in the valley of Nazareth. And Nathaniel could say that Nazareth, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now, when the time came for him to be given birth unto, again, the Bible says there was no inn. There was no inn in Bethlehem at the time. Because they had gone there because Caesar Augustus has issued a decree that the census should be taken. Now, when they got to Bethlehem, there was no inn, there was no place where Mary could go about the process of delivery. Hallelujah. And so, she, he was conceived, he was given birth to in a manger. Now, at the age of 12, when Jesus Christ had gone to the synagogue and began to teach the word of the Lord with authority and with power. I believe that at that age, Jesus had discovered his mission and his ministry, his agenda on earth. But the Bible makes us aware that he did not rush into ministry, but he lived in obscurity for 30 good years. 30 good years. So from, an, from the age of 12, he still didn't usher himself fully into ministry. Hallelujah. But he continued to dwell in a period of obscurity until such a time that God will uncover him and release him to come to a place of notoriety. A place where he will be noticed. Hallelujah. By the public. Hallelujah. Now he had a wonderful ministry. What I call a boundary breaking ministry. A power encounter ministry. He had a ministry that was very, very powerful. And that was a crowd pulling a ministry that attracted many to himself. Hallelujah. Now at this time as we read according to the account of, of Mark. Now the story of Jesus Christ had reached its climax. It had reached its epic. It has reached its peak. Hallelujah. And Jesus' ministry was about to come to an end. Hallelujah. Now the, we, we, we have come to. At this stage we have come to the last section of the gospel. Where Jesus was about to be betrayed. And he was about to die for the saints of mankind now mark introduces the passion narrative or what we call the passion week the 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 the, the, the suffering week hallelujah now the passion story is a story of betrayal it is a story of trials it is a story of suffering and it is it is a story about the death of jesus christ so at this stage there was tension in the atmosphere and Jesus Christ himself was full of anxiety. Now he had gone to the mount to pray. And the Bible says there when he prayed. He was full with anxiety. He was full of fear. So much so that even his sweat was like clots of blood. And his prayer was that three times he went to the Lord in prayer. And he said, Father, if it is my will, then let this cup pass me 
over pass me by yet not my will but your will oh lord yet not my will but my will be done now when i hear this prayer you know what it tells me it informs me about the fact that jesus christ was also human hallelujah now the agony of death had filled him and death was tearing him in the face and looking at what he was going to go through in jerusalem his prayer was that let this car pass by but yet and it it, it 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 brings out the humanity of jesus you know sometimes we are tempted so much to tilt towards the side of his divinity and when we see him doing miracles we see him doing so many things we are only tempted to affirm the fact that he is god but beloved i am here to affirm and also re to represent the fact that he was not only god but he was also fully man on earth hello jesus was fully god and he was fully man now coming on earth he did not there is a hymn that says he emptied himself of all but love which i believe is theologically wrong because whilst on earth he was not only human he was still god he had not emptied himself of his deity he was still god on earth now whilst on god, being god on earth he was not only fully god but he was also fully man that was why when death and the agony of death was tearing him in the face jesus said let this cup pass me by other places in scripture he went hungry other places in scripture he slept or mark says he slept on a cushion there are other places of in scripture where he was thirsty, and all these depicts his humanity hallelujah he went through it all because of us but the bible makes us aware according to the reading in mark that when they were approaching jerusalem and when they had come to bethage and bethany jerusalem they were approaching jerusalem the holy city the religious and the political capital of israel now when they were approaching that city jesus knew as a matter of fact that that was his last time that he will go to jerusalem and he will not return but he was still determined to go to jerusalem hallelujah he knew it that that was the last time that he was going to Jerusalem. He will not come out of Jerusalem alive and go back to Jerusalem again. This will be his last visit to Jerusalem. And he was still determined to go. When they got to Bethage and Bethany, he said to his disciples that go to the city ahead of you. There you will find a colt that is tied there. Untie that colt and bring that colt to me. Now, when anybody asks you why you are untying the coat, tell that individual that the Lord, the master, is in need of it. Can I go a bit deeper here and give you some three revelations and insights that I have received from here? Now, in the midst of all the tension that was going through, in, that, that was going on in Jerusalem, in the midst of, the, of agony and death that was tearing him in the face, he still exercised his prophetic calling and as a prophet he could discern and he could know from afar he knew things even from a distance that although he had not gone to the city ahead of him he could tell his disciples that go to that city and over there in that city you will find a coat that is tied there untie it the agony of death was tearing him in the face but he was still in the business of exercising his prophetic calling and his prophetic mantle and he could see from a distance hallelujah number two by saying to the men that go when anybody asks you what you are doing tell that individual that the master is indeed of the code also informs my thinking and it tells me that jesus here was displaying his power over the will of man that he says that go if anybody should ask you tell that individual that the lord is in need of the donkey and the moment they said that they did not ask them any further questions they asked them to go now this tells me that jesus has a power he has the power over the will of man and that which he declares nobody can overturn it hallelujah the power
power over the will of man. Now he can manipulate us like robots. But he has chosen not to do that. Hallelujah. Amen. Now number three. It also shows his dominion over his creatures. That everything that God has created. He has total control. Total dominion over that. Hallelujah. And he was exercising these giftings. Untie him. Bring him to me. Let me sit on it. Now when they got there, the Bible says the coat was tied. It was tied as if it was of no use. It was tied there. And nobody had ever sat on the coat and on the donkey. And that coat was as if it was as if the coat was of no use. And the coat was just dwelling there. Tied there. For no business. Hallelujah. Now you know what I am discerning here. I have come to inform your thinking. Some of us I see under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Uh, there are times that individual believers are tired. Tied bound by the enemy. As if there is no hope in us. Uh, as if there is no goodness in us. Uh, but this day I am here to announce to somebody. That just as Jesus demanded a release. Uh, the release of the cult. Uh, I demand your release. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Christ, anybody that holds you bound, any situation that holds you bound, any situation that has tied you, and it's as if there is no goodness in you, it is as if there is no good thing that can come out of you. I am here to untie you in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus said that I am here at this tomb, I am here to raise Lazarus from the grave. But after I have risen Lazarus from the grave, Lazarus will come out of the tomb still bound but untie Lazarus loose him and let him go this afternoon I am here just as Jesus set, the, set Lazarus loose just as Jesus set the coat loose demanded the release of the coat and said loose the coat and let the coat come for my use I said you loose from the bondage of the enemy in the name of Jesus any limitation over your life I said you loose on this Palm Sunday afternoon. I demand your release from the camp of the enemy. I demand your release from captivity in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that holds your destiny bound, I am here to set you loose in the name of Jesus. Beloved, let me announce to you that your isolation is not a rejection, but you are at a place of reservation. You are for the master's use. The master has reserved you for an appointed time. And at the appointed time, you will be released. Somebody is being released today. Somebody's appointed time is today. You are being released from sickness. You are being released from diseases. You are being released from oppression. In the name of Jesus Christ, from the marital bondage, I see you coming out. In the name of Jesus, because the master has demanded your release today and when the master shall set you free you will be free indeed yeah. hallelujah hallelujah and beloved I have come to realize by experience that's when God wants to pull you out of something negative no power no demon no witch can hold you back when Jesus is determined to pull you out of a situation no power can hold you back in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah now I've also come to realize that the coat was tied tied and I believe tied to the neck and when something is tied or when a living thing is tied now you can only go as far as the rope will reach you can only go as far as the rope will carry you to go and then you as you are going you are held back now in life there are situations that sometimes hold us back when we are on the journey to the
the fulfillment of our destiny when we are on the journey to the fulfillment of our agenda on earth sometimes there are situations limitations things that hold us back and prevent us from securing our release and prevent us from getting to our desired destination but today every limitation anything that holds you back I cut it off in the name of Jesus I cut it off in the name of Jesus any limitation anything that just as you are approaching your blessing anything that holds you from that blessing I cut it off to the roots in the name of Jesus and I cast them to the roots in the name of Jesus may you be set loose the Bible says that it shall come to pass that the daughters of Zion shall break through and they shall possess their possession may you break through break forth break forward and possess your possessions and your inheritance and walk in the destiny that Jehovah has ordained for your taking the rope is cut off and so you are ushering yourself into your divine mega harvest anything that has tied you up and has become a limitation that you can only go to set a certain step you can only go to a certain level and at that level you cannot go any further or beyond i take it off in jesus name i decree it and i call it done i seal it with an amen in christ jesus our lord hallelujah hallelujah the bible says when the donkey was brought the people could not do anything but to take off their cloak and put their cloak on the donkey because the donkey had never been ridden on before that means the donkey was not even prepared for the master's use hallelujah <laughs> it doesn't matter the kind of rejection that you have received the man the master is ready you will be ready for his use when your miracle is ready hey nothing can hold that miracle back in the name of jesus christ they prepared the donkey and the master jesus christ sat on the donkey and the bible says he began to roll, ride on the donkey and as he was riding on the donkey the people that had gathered there began to shout hosanna 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 in the highest hosanna to him who comes in the name of the lord hosanna now you know what now the reason sometimes for everything there is a remote court and cause and there is an immediate cause now the reason why when the people had seen Jesus and they wanted to crown him king and they wanted to uplift him and they wanted to make him the one that God has caused him to become was the fact that there was something that was going on in Jerusalem at the time the Romans had captured Jerusalem the Romans were in total control of Jerusalem at the time now so there was a political upheaval and not only a political upheaval but also a religious upheaval now religiously things were not right the pharisees were doing things that were contrary to scripture and they were oppressing the people imagine that although just as jesus said my house shall be called the house of prayer but the house has become a place a marketplace where they were they were doing some merchandising and they were doing uh, over invo invoicing and under invoicing and they were cheating the people that are supposed to worship in the in the in the temple hello but that was going on and when you are being cheated by some assuming you come here and pastor says today i feel the prophecy it is here now this one is getting big yes, I, I feel the prophecy it is here but before i will give you a word you, you have to line my pocket with a thousand pounds that is a cheat hallelujah and when i and i invoice it when i continue to do that for so many times you will pray that bishops come, bishop comes here and get me and kick me out is that not the case? If I unwind your hands, twist you up, and try to scheme you and get money out of you, you will begin to call 
on God for mercy. You will see it as an oppression in the highest order. An abuse in the highest order. And this was going on. And in Jerusalem at the time, the Romans were also oppressing them. And as a matter of fact, the Jews were looking forward to a Messiah to come and release them from the oppression of the Romans. And twice when Jesus had fed them, they had attempted to make him king. But he had refused. And this time around, Jesus Christ himself had offered himself in the fulfillment of the prophecy of Zechariah. The chapter number 9, verse number 9. He says, oh daughter of Zion, see, your king comes riding on the donkey. And Jesus Christ had offered himself the king that was prophesied about by the prophet Zechariah. And so they began to shout. They began to promote Jesus Christ. They took off their cloak, spread it on the floor for the donkey to ride on. They cut palm branches for the donkey to ride on. And they did all these things in proclamation of the fact that Jesus is the king and the Lord who has come into fulfillment, the Messiah to redeem them from the oppression of the Israelites, of, of, of the Romans. Hallelujah. And so they were doing this. But now the scripture that they quoted by shouting Hosanna was Psalm 118. Psalm 118. That was where Hosanna was seen. And they quoted that scripture by proclaiming that Jesus, singing Hosanna to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But now, what is the meaning of the word Hosanna? Hosanna. When we shout Hosanna, what is the meaning of Hosanna? I want us to get the fuller understanding of the word Hosanna. So that this afternoon, as we shout Hosanna, we will know what we are about. Hallelujah. Psalm 118, when Hosanna was used. Now, Hosanna in the Greek, they say Hosanna. So we are not far from the Greek language. Now, Hosanna, according to the Hebrews, they pronounce it Hosanna. And then in Aramaic, they call it Hosanna. Now, all these pronouncements, whether Hosanna, Hosanna, or Hosanna, they all mean one thing to the Old Testament Jews. And the meaning of the word was simply save us now. Save us now. So as they cry out Hosanna, what they were saying to Jesus Christ is that we are tired of the oppression of the Romans and the cheatings of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And so save us now. Now the word Hosanna also simply means rescue us or help us according to the Old Testament Jews. And so whenever they shouted Hosanna, they are calling on the Lord to rescue them. This afternoon as we celebrate the Palm Sunday and we use the word Hosanna, my prayer for you is that God will hear us from the throne room. May God come speedily to you and help you out of your oppression. Help you out of your bondage. Help you out of your captivity. May God come speedily and rescue you like the way he rescued the Israelites from captivity in Egypt. Hosanna means help us now lord help us hey this afternoon my prayer is a hosanna that he will help me because that which i am going through is not pleasant there are bitter experiences that i have gone through in life but in this year of divine mega harvest i am looking forward to a fulfillment in my life i am looking forward to a greater harvest in my life i am looking forward to crossing borders that i have never crossed before i am looking forward to crossing territories that I have never crossed before. And except the Lord build the house. We that build will build but in vain. Except the Lord watch over the city. They that watch will watch but in vain. And so Lord I need your help. Hosanna Lord. Hosanna Hosanna. Help me Lord. So that I will come out of my captivity. Help me Lord. Rescue me from bondage. Rescue me. From satanic oppression. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus rescue us from the sicknesses from the diseases from the infirmities from the bondage that we are in help us Lord Hosanna in the highest Hosanna to the king that comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna 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 and so the Jews will cry out Hosanna and they are calling on so Hosanna is not only an acclamation of praise an acclamation or a praise declaration Hosanna becomes a prayer and this afternoon our prayer is Hosanna help us Lord deliver us Lord rescue us Lord save us now Lord save us from any situation that we are in free us from any situation that we are in in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God now in Christianity when Hosanna is used and they shout Hosanna Hosanna in the New Testament become an acclamation a proclamation of praise to the Lord hallelujah they are recognizing his messiahship so the New Testament believers when they saw Jesus coming they began to shout Hosanna to praise Jesus Christ to adore him to affirm the fact that he is the anointed one to deliver them from the oppression because they were anxiously looking forward to the Messiah and in Jesus they saw the fulfillment of the Messiah to release them in the name of Jesus Christ Hosanna Hosanna. Hosanna. So beloved, on this Palm Sunday afternoon, we sing Hosanna to him. We proclaim him king. We affirm his kingship. Not only are we singing praises unto him, but we are also praying unto him to grant us freedom. Hosanna in the highest. Beloved, there is power in praise. Even whether it is a cry for mercy or it is a praise proclamation, there is power in praise. The psalmist says that out of the mouth of babies and sucklings has God ordained praise because of our enemies. So that as we declare praises unto him, as we lift him up, as we proclaim him high, the king eternal, as we crown him the king of all kings, then we are praising him. And in the praise declaration, there is power. Hallelujah. Now many times in the Old Testament, God said to his people, that go to battle go do do battle do engage yourself in the battle the battle will not be yours it will be mine all that you will see is the victory just go there and sing praises blow the trumpet of praise and declare my, my kingship declare my authority and the bible says that at the lifting up of praise the walls of jericho tumble down as we lift up a praise with a hosanna song May it become a weapon. May the power that is in praise pull down any stumbling block, anything that holds us bound anything that defeats us as we proclaim even as we cry out or proclaim praises unto him we are proclaiming our freedom hallelujah there is power in praise there is power there is deliverance in praise there is healing in hosanna there is restoration in the hosanna there is freedom in the hosanna there is deliverance there is restoration in the hosanna there is comfort in the hosanna this afternoon if I were you, I will not only cry the cry of mercy, I will not only cry the cry of help, but I will also stand and give him praise for who he is, declare his greatness, declare his kingship, adore him as the king eternal, uplift him as the king eternal. If I were you, I would declare Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lord, Hosanna to him who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna to him who comes, Hosanna is the to the king eternal hosanna to the lamb of lambs hosanna
Hosanna to the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lord. In the name of Jesus, may your Hosanna song break the barriers. May your Hosanna bring you your healing. May your Hosanna bring you your deliverance. May your Hosanna bring you to a place, a place of restoration, a place of deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ, may your Hosanna bring you to a place, a place of healing, a place of restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ, Hosanna to the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the name of Jesus Christ, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lord, Hosanna to the King eternal, in the name of Jesus Christ, Hosanna, 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 help us Lord, help us Lord, help us Lord, our Hosanna is a cry for mercy, our Hosanna is a cry for favor, our Hosanna is a cry for deliverance, our Hosanna is a cry for restoration in the name of Jesus. Receive that deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna. May Hosanna bring you restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Yay, may God restore your health in the name of Jesus. On this Palm Sunday afternoon, receive the Hosanna praise. Receive the Hosanna praise of the Lord and let it break the chains. Let it break the shackles. Let it bring us an anointing. Let Hosanna bring us an anointing in the name of Jesus Christ. I will lift up Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. 